Much like the rest of 2023, the indie game scene came full force this year. They saw your wallet and wanted to jump you in the dimly lit alleyways of gaming's bright streets, but funny enough, we were just happy to give them our cash because they earned it. From innovation to honing their genres into something brilliant, indie devs definitely delivered this year. So let's go ahead and have a look at my 15 favorite indie games this year. And as per usual, this video will be kind of recommendations. So we'll go with little to no spoilers. Let's go. You're on a path in the woods and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You, my good friend, are here to slay her. And no, I didn't slip an extra S onto the word lay. Is this a horror game, a love tale or something entirely different? Why would we slay the princess anyway? Well, it's simple. If you don't, she will end the world. Oh, and she'll try to charm you, she'll lie, and if you let her, she'll kill you many times over without hesitation. At least that's what the disembodied voice of the narrator tells you inside of your head. But as games such as Little Misfortune or The Stanley Parable have oft proven, perhaps the narrator doesn't have your best interests at heart. Besides, how could she end the world chained up in her basement? This game is a brilliant make-your-choice narrative that really looks at the concept of nature versus nurture and looks to weigh in by providing a mirror to ourselves. This is more of an experience than a game, and you're probably not ready, nor will you ever be. Jusant is simple in its premise. It's a game all about the climb. It's marketed as a meditative climbing experience, but not so much if you have a fear of heights. That tower is rather tall. And if you don't have a fear of heights, it'll go ahead and give you a new fear. Because in this tale, the earth has stopped spinning. Unlike other games that feature climbing, Yusan isn't really interested in having you crashing back to Earth or cursing your loss of progress and lack of skill. It's more interested in you exploring it. With tools in hand and a watery little companion, it's a game that offers you puzzles, with the key to overcoming them being observation and planning. It's a game that really evokes similar feelings to that of Journey, with the whole venture to the top thing, but it also lets you uncover the tower's history in such a natural way, noting and documenting the past of its residents and their struggles, as water becomes a scarce commodity and the ocean retreats never to be seen again. Ramble the Mountain King is one for lovers of horror games such as Little Nightmares. It's an admittedly grim tale that follows along with a young boy named Ollie who sets out on an adventure to save his sister who's been kidnapped by a troll. Not one of those internet trolls, no, one of the hulking 30-foot human hungry variety. Unfortunately for Ollie, the twisted lands of Bramble are heavily inspired by dark Nordic folktales, so if you're versed in fables and folklores, you'll know exactly what's lurking in the shadows. Bramble is a very solid story experience that will only be amplified for fans with a bit of knowledge in its roots. It offers relatively basic gameplay with very light controls, and as it never overstays its welcome, it works wonders as it really lets you focus on the game's dark and oppressing nature. The previous games have been slow narrative experiences, so let's turn the oven temps up. It's time for Pizza Tower. The ingredients of this game include platforming, 90s cartoons, a bit of Wario Land sauce, ridiculously fast platforming, and a fat, balding, yet surprisingly agile and powerful Italian man who is on an absolute tear. Peppino Spaghetti is a dedicated, vengeful small business owner and an absolute freakish forward-moving whirlwind of destruction as you sit on the W key and fly through this incredibly quick, slick and greasy platformer to destroy the pizza tower and save a small restaurant from going out of business. This game honestly pulls off Sonic better than Sonic, and Peppino Spaghetti is a hero who's thrown business etiquette out the window to stick it to big business. Remind me to never anger the owner of a pizza restaurant, please. Look, if you've had the very specific dream of one day becoming an ethereal, godly, glowing white Shiba Inu to command the mindless populace, humanity has that covered, and I won't judge your oddly specific dreams. Much like the internet followed the doge, the bipedal walking flesh bags of this world have become subservient to your four poor authority, and now you need to use them to solve puzzles by controlling the masses with commands. It's hilarious how the tables have turned. Now you're the one barking the orders. This game features some devious puzzles, light platforming, and even the occasional action boss fight. Personally, I think any game that features a player character that's a godly dog should absolutely be worth looking at. And if you're one of the I love animals more than people crowd, well, you do whatever you want with your subservient little people. Mind-bending games like Antichamber and Superliminal have always captured me with their unique approaches to puzzles. And now, this year, we got Viewfinder to add to the list of games that make you question what even is reality? This game is all about challenging perception, redefining reality, and reshaping the world around you. All through the lens of an instant camera that can take a bit more than a happy selfie. The pictures it snaps have a tendency to want to abandon the 2D plane and then be imprinted on the world wherever they are placed. This gives way to the game's primary mechanic of essentially reshaping reality to fit your need in order to progress. Viewfinder is a relatively short, albeit incredibly polished puzzle game, so if you're a fan of the genre or just wanting to turn your brain into mush, this is one to play this year. 
Continuing on with puzzle games, the breakout indie game of the year winner at Jeff Keighley's big old advertisement show was Cocoon. And oh, let me tell you, that pissed off absolutely every Pizza Tower fan on my TikTok. Jesus. Anyway, this outstanding puzzle game is from the lead gameplay designer that worked on Limbo and Inside. It features a small bugs adventure as it quite literally has to hold the weight of multiple worlds that are contained within orbs on its shoulders. The game's main mechanic is world jumping, which causes you to dive into any of the worlds to venture inside. You can also pick up these orbs and place them inside other orbs, and even have them interact with one another in clever ways. This promotes some incredibly slick and genuinely mind-melting puzzles as you slowly begin to work out the synergies of all the worlds. It has a really charming way of forcing you to overthink everything, which gets you rather stuck and then quite embarrassed when you realize it was a one plus one kind of answer and your mental whiteboard was looking more like you were trying to solve the sum of cubes problem. Shout out to the one or two math nerds amongst you that knows what that is. I didn't know I could be equally relaxed yet absolutely terrified at the same time, but that is a discovery that Dredge sailed right into my consciousness this year. This game strikes an absolutely brilliant balance between a calming fishing game and the nightmarish pages of HP Lovecraft's tentacle-filled mythos of mind-bending fuckery. The open ocean is really the perfect setting for this game's horror premise, seeing as it too is calming on the surface, yet a whole barrel of nopes underneath. In this tale, you play as a fisherman who runs into some suddenly appearing rocks problems, before being forced to dock at a small town for repairs, which the mayor then holds over your head. Get some fish, pay off the debt for repairs, and sadly for you, you've also been dragged into machinations beyond your comprehension, that despite knowing, none of the townsfolk really want to share with you. They just eerily encourage you to be back at the dock before sunset. Sea of Stars was this year's indie game of the year at many, many awards show, and it is a game where the sea within is created entirely by the compliments I alone could flood this game with. It's a brilliant throwback to games of the classic era where fidelity wasn't the key and 16 bits could get you all the way into beautifully crafted worlds. It contains a narrative that's familiar, you know, an ancient evil awakens, now go slap them around with your party of heroes, but it's also got plenty of twists and turns that keep you engaged along its roughly 35 hour main story runtime. You know, engaged might be a bit of an understatement. This game's world is so brilliantly crafted and full of activities, with each destination feeling different and full of things to do. The writing will find you belly laughing one minute and tearing up the next. There's a reason this game was heaped with praise this year, and let me tell you, if you're looking for a throwback or looking for a new way to get into old school games, Sea of Stars should be your first stop. Fans of monster collecting styled games were not left out this year either, as Cassette Beast took the premise of Pokemon and then ran with it all the way to home base. Nostalgia, retro technology being repurposed and co-op fun, this game really has it all. After washing up face first on the sandy beaches of New Wirral, the residents of your newly discovered island report having troubles with strange beasts that inhabit the lands, and now you are tasked with fighting them off with what I can only describe to be as advanced video game bullshit signs and cassette tapes that are used to record and transform into the very monsters you must now fight. This game is a lesson on the methodology of the old yoink and twist, taking a familiar nostalgic formula and creating something new. The classic monster collecting, turn-based combat elements, elemental weakness systems, they all rear their heads once again, but they are made so much deeper with this game's excellent combination system. Take any two monsters and slam them together to create a fully new animated form. Sorry to the poor artist that had to draw all those goddamn sprites, damn. Tell me a game's a murder mystery and you got me hook, line, and sinker, and I'm happy I bit the bait with Killer Frequency. It's situated in the small town of Gallows Creek in the year 1987, and you play as Forrest Nash, a washed-up late-night radio host who's found himself embroiled in the town's murderous past. One quick phone call turns your shift from playing sweet tunes to being the town's only lifeline against the murderer's overnight rampage. The first caller of the evening happens to be the town's only emergency responder, letting you know that the sheriff is dead, the deputy is out along with all of the outward communications, so all emergency calls have been rerouted to you in the studio while she flees to the neighboring town for help, which is unfortunately an eight hour round trip. So now you have to hold out the night. The game is full of light puzzle and horror elements, but where it really shines is how it makes the whole town feel alive, despite you barely ever leaving your studio. And every time you do leave the studio, you're worried that you might be the next victim. Venba is the shortest game on this list, but it is a poignant tale that gives you a peek behind the curtain of what it's like to be an immigrant. Of what it's like to pack up your family and leave, sailing across the world far from home. It tells the struggles of adapting to a new culture, yet trying to keep yours close to your heart in order to pass it down to future generations. And of course, what better medium to explore this than food? 
The game may only have a runtime of like two hours, but the doses and biryani it dishes up will make sure you will certainly be hungry by the end of it. You'll tackle light puzzles, restore lost recipes, and experience the tale of this Indian immigrant family as they grow and change through their journey of love, loss, and discovery. If you can relate to this game, it will probably make you ugly cry, and even if you don't, it's a great look at the life many people around you may live. Shadows of Doubt is a game that will endlessly tickle your inner detective. Taking place in the seedy streets of a randomly generated neon-drenched city block, there is something in the water because the citizens here are more murderous than ancient Rome, which is good for you because murder keeps your schedule full and your pockets lined as a private detective in a city where the police are either too lazy or too corrupt to actually find the culprit. So go to town hall, grab a case file, head to the crime scene, gather clues, piece together the case and find the assailant. The depth this game has is wild. I once had a HR manager taking out her co-workers which we discovered after checking work records and then breaking into her apartment only to find the skulls of her victims on the kitchen bench. Time to overclock your brain and get into Turbo Overkill, a game heavily inspired by some of the all-time FPS greats such as Doom, Quake, and Duke Nukem 3D. After Johnny Turbo returns to his hometown of Paradise, he finds out the entire population is possessed by Sin, a rogue AI with an army of augmented minions. But alas, it's a good thing Johnny's down for the smoke and totally not desperate enough to put his past mistakes behind him with enough cash earned through any means possible. Oh, and it's also a good thing that he has a chainsaw leg because you'll need to rip and tear your way through the street to complete an almost impossible job, and that is taking down the greatest AI ever created. Of course, nothing's ever easy in paradise though. Other bounty hunters are out for that sweet cash too, and that's not gonna make your life any easier. Fast FPS lovers cannot miss this one. Amongst its nostalgia, gore galore, gunplay, and brilliant design, there is also punishing modifiers, which you can find around to really push the game and Johnny Turbo to his max. Chance of Sinar is a linguistic puzzle game that is an absolute treat for anyone that loves languages, brain scratches, or the feeling of connecting people. Long ago, several civilizations lived and flourished in a massive tower. That was until time eroded their connections, and their very languages became foreign to one another. Now they live estranged, separated by the sands of time and no longer speaking. That is until you, a faded traveler with a talent for communication and deciphering languages, arrive. And upon your arrival, you begin to piece together their languages with your trusty notebook, translating them as you go and slowly reconnecting the peoples of the tower and allowing them to understand one another once more. The level of care that went into this game is gorgeous. Even the fictional languages have their own syntaxes and grammar rules for you to work out. It's such a refreshing take on the point-and-click detective-esque genre that even the weirdly forced stealth sections of this game cannot diminish. It is a truly unique game and one you cannot miss this year. And there you have it, the indie games that I think were absolutely outstanding this year. This list could have been so much longer, but look, I only have so much time in the day, man. If you've enjoyed the content, it would be absolutely lovely to see you around once again. Thank you so much for watching and fair winds to you, my friends.